confusion or famine, or nakedness or peril or so. Even as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus speaking to Martha, he said to her, in verse 21, John 11, he says, Martha therefore said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatsoever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus says unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection of the life. And he that believes in me, though he is dead, he shall live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this afternoon. I thank you for bringing us together here this evening. God, the circumstances for us as humans may be very difficult. But God, I understand your word where you says, precious in the sight of God is the death of those whom you love. And so this afternoon, oh God, we just thank you for the grace. We just thank you for the strength and the comfort that the Holy Spirit provides for every one of us at this moment. As we seek, Lord God, to engage in an experience that is not always comfortable for us. But God, I thank you that heaven rejoices even this afternoon. And we give you praise and we bless you and we honor you. We commit this meeting in your hands this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You will see in your program this afternoon the song that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. And I ask that you join with me as we all sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus. And certainly Jesus is, as the Bible says, such a great friend to every one of us, especially in moments like these. We can sense and feel his friendship and comfort. He says, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, sins and grace to bear. Oh, a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we have in fall. Jesus. 
What a friend certainly that we have and we find in Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. May I ask you to have your seat because of people standing. And at this time we will welcome. He, he, he was my uncle. I know him referring to him as Uncle John. And but he's also, also a pastor of the Baptist Union of Trinidad and Tobago, to which I am a part of as well. This afternoon we have with us our president of that organization. And he's now going to bring tribute and greetings on behalf of the Baptist Union of Trinidad and Tobago. I now welcome to the mic uh, Pastor Preston. Good afternoon to all of us, and certainly under these circumstances, it is difficult even uh, to be here. But again, we recognize, yes, the law of the land, and we recognize also the ultimate being, that is Jesus Christ. And today we are assembled, and therefore the departing of our beloved, the Reverend John Bramble. And therefore, for my own position, I no doubt identify him as one of the repository of the Baptist Union of Trinidad and Tobago. And this gentleman has such a wealth of information as relates to the Baptists. But today we mourn, and as the Bible says, we mourn with them that mourn and weep with them that weep. The Bible reminds us, Mark, the perfect man, for the end of his life, is this. We will reach a point of no return. We also recognize that there is no remedy for death. We are asked even to reflect, but then ultimately we'll be looking forward for that great reward. On the behalf of the Baptist Union of Trinidad and Tobago and its executive members, apart, apart from that, all the pastors and the churches, we don't only empathize, we also sympathize with you as you go through this period of adjustment. And remember that weeping will last the night, but joy comes in the morning. God gives to all of us the grace that is sufficient to make whatever necessary adjustment as we go through this time. I humbly ask of all of us. God bless. Thanks so much, Pastor Weston, for expressing those thoughts to us this afternoon. We appreciate it a lot. And uh, though I stand here sometimes, of course, this afternoon, I'm thinking, man who, in my estimation, is such a great person who would have lived among us. It is just unfortunate that this afternoon we don't have uh, a place in which we can just have this place packed out. Because I know that there are so many persons who this gentleman life has touched and would probably want to express or be here to share this afternoon's experience but unfortunately circumstances do not afford us this evening but we are thankful to God for those of you who are here sharing this very special moment with us this afternoon may I ask you one more time to stand as we sing the song when the road is called up yonder I will be there and so we sing with a sense of understanding with a sense of conviction and own experience that we will be a part of that experience. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the glory of His resurrection shall when the sins of the Lord shall God over the on the other shore and the road is far up yonder Yeah, and uh, when 
Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can have your seats. Thank you again so much. Hallelujah. At this time, we will have a scripture reading from one of the pastors in the midst, son of the deceased. And we have called up now um, Mr. Brandon Jr., should I say, who is going to come and read for us uh, from God's word. Good afternoon, everybody. Reading this afternoon is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, when we die and leave these bodies, we'll have a home in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself, and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present body, and we long for the day when we'll put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will not be spirits without bodies, but we will put on new heavenly bodies. Our dying bodies make us groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and have no bodies at all. We want to slip into our new bodies, so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by everlasting life. God himself has prepared us for this, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. That is why we live, by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we'd rather be away from these bodies, for then we'll be at home with the Lord. So our aim is to please Him always, whether we are here in this body or away from this body. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or the evil we have done in this, our bodies. Amen. Thank you so much. God's good. I'm still hearing and understanding. At uh, this time, I would like to welcome Miss Ingrid Bennett, daughter of the deceased, who will come and share with us the viewers. To appreciate Good afternoon, everyone. To well, some of you here, he was Uncle John. To some of you here, he was Pastor Brownwell. To me, he was Daddy. To his grandchildren, he was Papa John. John Sebastian Cecil Brownwell was a husband, father, brother, teacher, Sunday school facilitator, Sunday school literature writer, trustee of the Baptist World Alliance, Vice President of the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship, President of the Baptist Union of Trinidad and Tobago, Coordinator of the Southern Caribbean Sunday School, and Tutor of UTI, and we can go on. He was born to Joseph and Gertrude Bramble on the 10th of March, 1929. He was kind, soft-spoken, and a consummate gentleman. As a father and teacher, he encouraged his children and students to fulfill their potentials and saw the possibilities for their success in all. He accepted Christ as a teenager and remained steadfast in his faith until his death. As a husband, he was loving and made the woman he married feel like a princess. He won the heart of his wife with his beautiful voice, with songs of love and tenderness, as during their courtship, he actually hired a guitarist to accompany him as a serenaded woman. He was married on the 20th of December, 1958, and fathered six children with his wife, four sons and two daughters. He was also a favorite uncle to all his nephews and nieces. As a grandfather, he was their beloved Papa John, who gave advice on every topic for their betterment. He was humble, gentle, thoughtful, kind, and understanding. He taught his children about planting and harvesting peas, corn, soil, rice, and cassava. He 
taught us about God, spiritual stewardship, and family devotion. He had a love for art, craftsmanship, poetry, and this was passed on to the second and third generation. He lived his life as an example of humility, love, kindness, and patience. And so he will be remembered as a steadfast Christian, soldier, pastor, thoughtful grandfather, and amazing poeta. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This is great. She said, the daughter of the deceased, who would have had the experience of living with him and sharing some very beautiful moments in life together. And um, this afternoon, as I said, we are in a position where we celebrate the fact that when he had this personal relationship with God, but we also feel that sense of loss that is difficult for us to free to this day. But we thank God for his goodness to the world. At this point, I would like to invite this one of his sons, uh, Richard Rambo, who will do a special for us. Oh, bless the Lord. 
And let me just take a few minutes to share with you from God's word and the message that I seek to share with you this afternoon is one that speaks specifically directly to the person uh, the deceased himself who has gone on to be with the Lord. And so I say the title of my message is The Wisdom of John Bramble. That's what I would like to share with you this afternoon. The Wisdom of the deceased John Brown. And I make the statement very boldly that he was a wise man from my understanding and so on and observation. And I begin by quoting for you why I say he was a wise man firstly. Because the Bible says in Psalm 14 and also Psalm 53, it says, The fool have said in his heart there is no God. And they are corrupt and they have done abominable works. And there is none that went good. My understanding, therefore, is that the fact that Mr. John Bramble has embraced God as the true and living God puts him in the category of a wise man. The Bible tells us that it's only those who do not, uh, those who do not recognize God as being who he is, they can be considered foolish. It is foolish not to understand that this world that we live in this body that we live in or exist in for a while, it is foolish to try to think that maybe somebody made you other than God himself. When you look at your own function, the functions of your own physical body, the way the world, the whole universe functions and operates, you will appreciate therefore that it took somebody that is bigger than any one of us in this world to have created all of those things. And Pastor John Brambler, Uncle John as I know him, he embraced God as being God, the living God. And to me, anyone who embraced God as being God, the living God, is a person who I call a wise person. It also gives me an understanding, therefore, that sometimes people would want to think that the one who might be considered foolish might be someone who might be an atheist, who says there is no God. But it's not only those who are thinking like that, considered foolish. There are those who would understand and say that there is a God. But one of the things that the, the, the Hebrew word that speaks to the word fool in this particular context is the word neighbor. And of course, if you're familiar with the scripture, you would know that there's a gentleman that was called neighbor in scripture. The Bible referred to him as a foolish man. And that word neighbor really speaks also to the fact that one who recognizes as long as you acknowledge that there is a God, it means therefore one is now conditioned or has a sense of responsibility to live according to the dictates of that God and also would put themselves in a position understanding that there is a God who has given us instructions and directed us how to live therefore we will also be accountable to that God and to me um, Reverend John Bramble understood therefore that he wanted to be accountable to the God, the one who created him, the one who recognized as God. And because of his desire to be accountable, he chose to embrace God as the living God. There are so many persons in this world who don't want anybody to dictate their pace, as we say. They don't want anybody to tell them how to live their lives. But he himself, John Bramble, decided, I will allow God to tell me how to live. Because he understood, therefore, that if I will allow God who knows all things, who has all wisdom, if I will allow him to guide me and direct me, that's why the Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And he trusted God with all his heart. So I call him a wise man because he chose to make God his God. He didn't allow anybody else or things to become his God. He chose to make God his God. Secondly, I call him a wise man, and I refer to him as a wise man because the Bible says in Psalm chapter 9 and verse 10, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Not only did John Bramble choose to embrace this God as his God, but he also understood that if he would allow this God to govern his life, and he lives in a sense of respect and awe and reverence for this God that he embraces. Therefore, 
He understand therefore that anyone who lives in those conditions or lives in that situation will consider themselves to be a wise person. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And you've seen in your world today how many persons or people don't have a sense of fear for God. They don't have a sense of respect and honor for Him. In fact, in this day in the churches, and I don't know if this church may have had that experience, I don't think so, but there are several churches who have experienced and persons now breaking into churches, stealing stuff. I understand some time ago, the after the offering was taken up in the church, they went and held up, or should I say, um, they went and, and, and held up the, 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 the priests who took up the offering. That simply says to me that there is no fear for God. The Bible says that when one has a fear for God, it tells me that they recognize that God is, so, is sovereign. They recognize that God is supreme. They recognize that God is the ultimate one who holds and governs all things in his hands and charge. I declare today before you, and I say it with confidence, that I understood from my own perspective, and I know those of you who have observed this life, even as I listen to the eulogy being read, I understood from an early age, he embraced God as his personal savior. He made Jesus Christ his Lord, because he understood the value of embracing God as his only true God. Not only did he embrace him, but he also, as a human being in this world, recognized that I must not only embrace God, but I must learn to reverence and respect and give him what is due to him. And, and Uncle John, I can't help but saying that, or should I say Pastor John Bramble, or the deceased that is before us, he embraced God. And not only did he embrace God, but he walked in the fear of God. He understood that every action, he seemed to have had that sense of understanding that as he lived in this world, that I one day will have to stand before God and give an account of my life so that everything that he, do, he did in this life, he was conscious that whatever I did, I am all I'm having, one day having to give an account for my actions and my words in this life. And so he lived this life understanding that if I live in the fear of God, then my life in itself would be of great value and a sense of bringing that pleasure to God. That is why we can say today, as the Bible tells us, that precious in the sight of God are those who die in Christ Jesus. And I believe although we are in sorrow here today and we feel that great sense of loss, I know that heaven rejoices. I know that there's a joy in the heavenlies because why? There's a gentleman who lived his life, who walked with God, who feared God, who lived in that place where he embraced God as his Lord and he's now coming home. I recall the Bible talking about Stephen when he was being stoned. So the Bible tells us, Stephen says while he was being stoned, he says, I see Jesus standing and I believe that possibly it just might be that when uh, John Bramble would have been leaving this world, that heaven will have taken a sense of attention of his presence because of the understood that this is a man who feared God and yet this is a man who embraced God. He lived for God. His life was about God. And so therefore, because he lived for God, I am confident to say today that he was a man who was wise. He was wise because he embraced God. He was wise because he feared God. And finally, I would like to submit to you, he was not only wise because he submitted to God, he was wise because he also built his life upon God's word. And that's why the Bible tells us, Matthew 7, 24 to 27, the scripture tells us, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain came, the floods came, the wind blew, and it beat upon the house, and it did not fall because it had been founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rain fell, the flood came, the wind blew, and beat against that house, and it fell. And the Bible says, and great was its fall. There's a difference between the wise and the foolish. The wise man understand therefore that even as he embraces God and fears God, he knows that he must live by the principles that the, that's God that, he, that he, he embraces. He knows that he must live as such. And Jesus speaking to, from in the book of Matthew, speaking to a whole multitude of people, ended his discourse by making such a statement, he said, after all the things that he spoke and preached about and taught them, he ended that discourse by saying, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are those who are foolish 
and there are those who are wise. And he says, the foolish will hear what I say, but will not do it. But the wise will hear what I say, and they will practice it. And I can simply say that Uncle John, the Pastor John Brandler, the deceased, was one who heard what God said, and with all of his desire, sought to do what God would have said to him. Sought to live by that word. He built his life upon the word, coming out of the experience, the times that he taught so many who was in Bible school, the times that if you understand that he was a man who loved to write, and you can probably go to his library now and you may find stuff that he may have been writing and writing and writing for years, and he loved to write stuff because there was so much in him. That is more or less why Miles Monroe makes the statement. He says one of the richest places in the world is the grave because he's gone with so much that is in him that many people are still reading books and still trying to discover. But he had all those things welled up in him because he took time to invest in himself. And to them saying he was a wise man because he built his life upon God. We are living in a very fragile world. And you know, even in this very day in which you live, you will recognize how many things are happening around us that puts us all in a position of unstableness right now in the world in which we live. People are not comfortable. The reason why they are not so comfortable and so many persons are seemingly in this place of fear is because I can say possibly they did not trust this God. They have not placed their faith and their trust in this God. Because if you trust God, whatever comes your way, that's why the Bible tells us when Jesus was speaking, he says the storm will come, the rain will come, the flood will come, all kinds of things will come. But he says, when your house is built upon that rock, Jesus Christ, once it's built Built upon that foundation. In the midst of the flood, your house will stand. In the midst of the rain, your house will stand. Whatever comes your way, your house will stand because you choose to build strong upon God's word. And any home or life that is built upon God's word will be destined for success. We seek to place our hearts and our minds on so many things and tell ourselves our lives are valuable based on what we have. And so many persons think, well, you know why? I have land, I have car, I have house, I have so many things. I am educated to the max, I have degrees to the max, I have all of these things. Those things are good for us to have, to have. But I want you to understand at the end of the day, I have done so many funerals and every time I stand before them, I look in the casket of the boxes and I never see house going, I never see land going, I never see money, I never see none of those things going. All I see going is the, the remains of the person and that's why the Bible says any man who dies in Christ the Bible says they will cease from their labor and the Bible says and their works will fall them what did you do with your life while you're in this because certainly all of us will go the same way now there's none of us in here those who are listening to me today if Jesus tarries will not pass in the same place all of us will come in the same young old middle age all of us will go one day but the greatest thing about this gentleman who is lying here, his remains that is lying here before us today, because his wisdom speaks, he embraced God in his lifetime. He feared God in his lifetime. He built his life upon God in his lifetime. And so he can go, he can sorrow. And I always remember my own father lying on the bed in the hospital in San Grande. And I went to pray for him. And he said to me, don't bother to pray for me, son. I don't see where I'm going already. And I don't want to come back here. He was happy to go. He was glad to go, you know what? And there was no sorrow or sadness. I was a woman, I was um, conducting a funeral at a cemetery some time ago, and there was a woman standing next door to the grave. And when she looked down inside there, she began to scream and cry out, oh, and there's something inside there, afraid, afraid, and those were her words. I am saying that if she certainly had the confidence of John Bramble, she could have looked down in many graves and had confidence knowing that whatever is inside there, I am prepared to face whatever is. When you know God, when you have a personal relationship with Him, death doesn't bring you fear. You are confident that if you leave here now, you know that you're going to be with your Father. And so I encourage all of us. Yes, we miss Him very dearly. Oh my God, I missed Him. Because I sat with my moms on Him and I listened to them speak so many things that, listen, I heard Him spoke some things that I don't even know if I could have ever done in my lifetime. I don't know anybody who worked hard like this gentleman. The stuff that he told me he did, I couldn't do that. I don't know if I could do that. He did some stuff that was not easy, but he lived his life as a man and was able to 
convey to so many of us the experience that he's left behind. And so I close my statement to you this afternoon by making a quote from this gentleman. Jade Lafontaine makes a statement. He says, Death never takes the wise man by surprise. He's always ready to go. And so for John Bramble, he was not surprised at death when it came. In fact, my last time of communing him at the bed, I really did not want to see him struggle. I prayed and said, God, whatever is your desire for him, give him rest. Because I didn't want to see him struggle through life. And I believe God to give him rest from his labor. I wasn't too uh, so care about the fact that, you know, he's not ready. I know he was ready to go. When I speak with him and I hear his conviction, when I sat down there with him, it's a joy to spend time with him. And I know that if he would only pass from this life, that certainly he would be happier than I would be. We are still having to deal with all kinds of crazy stuff in this world. You don't have to deal with that anymore. Corona is having people so uncomfortable all kinds of disturbance but I bless God for the goodness that God has shown him as he embraced God today we live with that confidence and I close this afternoon with those statements try to seek to encourage all those of you who are here let his life be an example to all of us live your life and see yourself as somebody who wants to live a life great wisdom embrace God fear God and build your life upon God it's a young lady in our midst who will share special with us and she's going to come at this time. And we're going out in the time a bit, but yeah, we are within that moment, five minutes. So let's welcome Sister Lisa Henry Noel, who will share with us as well.
Because the more you know him, the more you love him. You can imagine how you have cherished that song in this time. Hallelujah. May I ask you just one more time to stand together with me as we sing this last hymn. It is well with my soul as we sing together. We bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When
for you off, Daddy, the pastor, but the benefit of echo in his life. At the closing life, the point of his life, you will be able to say, it is well with my soul. How we give God praise to him. We give God honor and glory. And it is all this at this point in time that we pray with the members of the family, all those of you who are having us asking for these words. Well, let's see there's a pastor here. Uh, let me go and just take him on from outside because we're going to talk. So let me ask the pastor that he's saying thank you for letting me talk. Of course, want to make that exchange. That's Pastor Martin Pascal. Let me ask you to come. We're going to pray for the family here. Let's come in. Oh Lord, I said I'm next to this. Jesus, but I thank God for this. God for this today. Mm. He's coming. Mr. Pascal, can I ask you to join us and just pray for the family? Sure. Shall we pray? Father God, we come to you this evening, God, because you are God. Yeah. It is you who create, it is you who build up, it is you who break down. You are the authority, God. There is none like you, there is no one who has the authority that you have. In everything, you have the final say. That's right. You reign, you thunder when you please, and there is no one who can say or ask Jehovah God, why doest thou these things? Father God, we come to you this evening. You, who are a merciful God. You, who are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You, who are our savior, you who are our creator. Come to you this evening, God, presenting the bereaved family to you. Yes, God. Yeah, they are one family, but they comprise of different persons. And so, God, each of them will be going through their bereavement in different ways, because they are different. So it is impossible for us to give one word to all of them because they are dealing with it in different ways. So that you are the only person that can effectively comfort all of them. Because yes. you are able to minister to every one of them at the point of their need. Yes. And so we come lifting them up to you this evening, God. We come asking you to touch them. Uh, we come asking you, God, to hold them in the palm of your hand. For you said, whom you hold in your hand, no man can talk uh, them up. Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, I lift them up to you, God. And we, God, hear so much about separation. Mm -hmm. We hear so much about quarrels, God, and dissension in families at the death of a loved one. We come against that spirit in this family oh, in the name of Jesus. Lord. And we ask God that this, the passing of Pastor Bramble, will bring them together, God. Mm -hmm. You will bind them together, God, in cords that can never be broken. Father God, yes, they will miss him. But Father God, I pray, God, that in their bereavement, God, that they will take the, the words of the sons and they will lift up their eyes unto the hills from whence cometh their help. Knowing that their help will come from you. Because God, the truth is, there is no physical word that can be said to them. God, that can quench, that can, that can remove God, the anguish, that can answer all their questions, can, that can deal with all the things that, 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 that are going on inside of them. But God, one touch from you can make the difference. And so we ask this evening that you touch them. Touch them 
in a way that they will know that it is you. Jesus. Touch them in a way, God, that they, there will be no question. Yes. They will know the touch. They will recognize the difference in your touch, God. Yes. And so, that touch will cause them to cry out like Isaiah, who says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Father, they will say, in the year that my father, my grandfather, my uncle, whatever relation he was to them, in the year that he died, I saw the Lord. Father God, Lord, I lift them up to you, Jesus. In times like these, they will have many questions. But you are able to answer every I place them in your hand now. Because I know for them, that's the best place to be. You just take charge and control of them. Guide them through this period. Guide them through this time. Remind them in everything of the words of the songwriter who says, Jesus do it all things. I commit them to you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, at this point in time, for those of you who would like to have a review of the deceased, uh, you saw this time. So they prepare to go on. How do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith is also vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise. And if in fact the dead are not raised, for if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, your faith is vain and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all the men most miserable. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 10, the scriptures that we heard read today. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we grow longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling because when we are clothed we will not be found naked for while we are in this tent we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling so that which is mortal may be swallowed up by life for it has pleased God at this present time to take our brother pastor friend uncle dad from this earth I now commit his body to the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and 
we do look forward to the great day. The resurrection is going to happen. Immortal. Father, we thank you this afternoon, Lord God, for the blessed hope we have in Christ. And even as this remains, is now placed in the earth. We thank you, Lord, that we anticipate the coming forth of the resurrection. Father, we bless again the family and everyone who is present here. Let this experience today, O oh God, leave, O oh God, an impression in the hearts and minds of everyone who witnessed this life. And I speak your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercies and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all go to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. For when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Trusting, serving every day. One place him, and will the toys of life repair. For when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all, when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout for victory when we all, when we all, all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Hallelujah. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory when we all. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all when we see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. I know that no grave can hold my body down. No grave can hold my body down. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, no grave can hold my body down. I am no Lord, no grave can hold my body down. No, no, no grave can hold my body down. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, no grave can hold my body down. For believers coming from the east, they will be coming from the west. They will be coming from the north, and they will be coming from the south. And we are going up. We are going up. We are going up. When Jesus comes, oh, they coming from the east. They will be coming from the west. They will be coming from the north, and they will be coming from the south. We are going up, we are going up, and no will be going up when Jesus comes. That's why I say no grave can hold my body down. No, 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 no grave can hold my body down. For oh, when the trouble of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, 